Hello and welcome in Miami Community Radio. I am Goon Green. It's my pleasure to be with you all here this evening. Thanks so much for tuning in, anyone that's here with us live. Thank you as well to everyone who's checking out the archive on our YouTube channel, Miami Community Radio. Um, really pleased to be here in season two. We had a wonderful season one from uh, January 30th up until just a couple of weeks ago. And now we're into our second season of this year. Um, and looking forward to seasons three and four as well, but just <laughs> early on in season two, so <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, yeah, <laughs> just focus on what's uh, what's in front of us. But uh, speaking in, in of what's in front of us, I have with me here La Malara, incredible artist. Hello. Um, very um, honored to have you with us here tonight. Thank Thanks you. So I wanted much. to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for coming by, and um, I'm really excited to listen to your to your music that you're going to perform uh, in just a little bit. But before we get into that. I'm just curious, um, I, I like to ask this of everyone that I, that I interview as an artist, just, just to give some of your, your origin story, really, like how did you come to art? Was it something that you were always really involved in? Was it something that was, you know, like supported when you were younger in terms of the environments that you were in? Uh, I'd say definitely. I was really into like Rihanna, like heavy when I was young and she just inspired me with her like deep dark pop and her rated R era like that really that really you know changed something in me when i was younger and then from there i would just like here and there i would like make it like a little hobby i would like write write a little goofy song like elementary or like middle school i would, I would used to like have a ukulele mm. and i would just play that bitch in the lunchroom can i cuss yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. i would yeah. play that bitch in the lunchroom <laughs> And people would just, like, come around singing, like, stupid, censored, I'm not wow. censored, stupid, like, super, dang, what's the word when you cuss a lot? So Profanity-filled songs, mm. and we just, like, goof off, like, in the lunchroom. And uh, I think it was, like, when I, when I was, like, halfway through high school, and I was, like, uh, I think I want to take this seriously. So I, I just decided to take that seriously, for real. Wow, that's incredible, though. So you were writing music from when you were, like, really young? Like yeah. Like, in elementary school? Yeah, technically, yes. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Did you have, like, a teacher or mentor, or you just kind of no, taught yourself? It was, it was really, like, just by myself. I was the only child, hmm. so I learned a lot of my hobbies just, like, out of boredom by myself. YouTube University, Google yeah, University. Like, that's amazing. The goats, the goats for real. <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. And then you mentioned hobbies as well. Um, so to speak on some of the other areas that you're like engaged in, in artistically and in, in life in general, I know that you also do like some fashion design and then you're also like a nail tech. Yes. So yeah, just curious about how those relate to your journey and, and where that kind of fits into your perception of yourself. Well, most of my hobbies, to be like super honest, definitely revolve around like my career. So my fashion design, I always drew when I was younger. I always like used to have like my sketchbook. I would run through sketchbooks like it was nothing. And then once I started taking my career seriously, I decided to like start drawing myself and like drawing like outfits I would wear. Like I literally in my sketchbook, I have like this outfit drawn out. Wow. And just like, you know, just like being in my room, just like dreaming big and being like, oh, if I ever have an interview, I want to wear this. If I ever have a show in Atlanta, I want to wear this. Little things like that. It was just super fun. It's just such a, it's such a fun outlet. Right. Yeah, yeah. To have like the whole picture of everything, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And see it like in physical right in front of you. Right. Yeah. I think that's super important, like now more than ever, where it's not as easy to be like o so hyper focused in one area. Like, mm -hmm. I think as an artist, you kind of have to have like these different areas of activity where. Multiple you know, outlets. Yeah. Yes. And like do a lot of the stuff yourself. Um, oh, definitely. So that's really cool. So, so you were kind of your own muse then in terms of the fashion and everything? Like you're thinking about stuff yeah. that would work for yourself? Yeah. Nice. B basically, basically, yeah. I would just like draw bad bitches and then bad bitches started looking more like me. Started doing my makeup like a bad bitch, like the drawings. And then I started buying the clothes that was in my drawings. And I was like, yeah. I'm I'm this bad bitch now. <laughs> Amazing, yeah, yeah. So so all of those you kind of see that all as like one thing. You don't necessarily think of it as like, okay, I have these fashion pursuits that I'm trying to get together, and then I have the music, and like it's all connected to you Definitely. as an artist. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool. Thank so you. So then speaking on the the music itself, um, yeah, you mentioned like in high school that you kind of decided to become more serious about it was there like a specific 
like epiphany kind of mm -hmm. moment or, or something like something that happened that made you feel that way or just definitely and I feel like this is with a lot of artists COVID mm -hmm. <laughs> COVID I was like and also like that definitely that um dang what's I'm over here forgetting words what's that called when uh, existential crisis mm. everybody has an existential crisis at least once in their life and <laughs> I had that and I was just depressed and I was like bitch I need to do something in my life that I like right so I decided that this is like the most entertaining and fun and healthy way for me to express myself so I just went forward with it and I took it seriously and I was like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna dedicate myself to do this and I'm gonna go somewhere with this amazing yeah yeah much respect for that so what's the how has that experience been for you so far? Like, have you felt like you have a solid community around? Was it difficult to find people that you connected with in the early stages, or did it all kind of come about organically? Or? So I started being public and like started doing like open mics. Like I think a year and a half ago, I would say I started doing open mics at Roots, Roots nice. Cabo, Miami. Yeah, there's a new location, literally like 50 wow, feet away. That's I a lot you guys know. parked in at first. Yeah. What? That's crazy. <laughs> they just opened up a couple weeks or like months ago now, but yeah, wow. it's wild. Well, yeah, yeah. This, this is other building, like in a, also in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it was I know Roots, and uh, I think the host was Jose, and I would just like go there every. I think it was Wednesday not mistaken I, every Wednesday I would just go there I was saying I practice performing because that's just another outlet for me as well practice 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 and then eventually I started getting more friends somebody who definitely helped me is definitely Melody shout yeah. out to her bad bitch introduced me to all her friends and all her friends are super like open arms most of the community is like open arms for me for sure. like they I haven't had any troubles like any any weirdos any creeps thankfully nice <laughs> nobody trying to screw me over and that's why that's awesome yeah yeah so then w when you started like were you were you still writing your own music from the beginning or like when yeah. was your first actual release like my first release is more and that was two years ago oh, actually nice. two years ago and I was in my room, high as fuck on an edible, I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> it was like the craziest trip ever. <laughs> but uh, I have my producer, his name is Kizzle, is here. Shout out to him, he's from Atlanta, he's fire as fuck. Um, and he sent me this house beat, and I was like, you know, I never did house before, and this is really interesting. So I like started studying house as soon as I got mm. that beat. I started like studying all the music and seeing like how you, they usually lay out their their melodies, the repetitive like is repetitive but not too repetitive, right. but it's super catchy. So then I I made more. It took me like a couple weeks, and the rest is history. Amazing, yeah. Thank you. And then you have like new releases coming up, right? Too like an EP I and I think a music video I connected do, to that do. as well. I do. Next month I have an EP called Desire coming out. It's really dream based, and I'm really excited for everybody to hear and see about it. And I also have a music video coming out the same month. Uh, it's a single from the EP, so I'm really excited to put that out. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, everyone checking this out should should give that a listen, give the music watch video a watch. Up. Yeah, <laughs> and and you mentioned that it was dream based, so I'm going to use that as a segue into. You also have this band concept that you've yes. been working out, like the Dreamers, D R E E M U R Z for the for the watchers and listeners. So yes. if you could just speak on on that project, how that kind of came together. So, uh, I started my band. I was in my friend's room. His name is Chandler. Uh, he's my bassist now. Shout out to Chandler because he's also been it's a, a good huge name. help. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fire, fire, fire as bassist. Like, shout out to him because he's been helping me tremendously throughout this whole journey. But uh, I was with him and another artist. Her name is Asa. And we were just, like, talking. And I was like, you know, I've been seeing other artists like Phoenix, especially. Like, she really inspired me to, like, have my own band. And I was like, you know, it, it gives a good attraction, shows off other talents. Like, I would love to do that. So Chandler was like, hey, I play bass. He called up his friends so that also play instruments because he was, like, in a band. Not in a band band, but, like, in a school band band. Yeah, yeah. And he called up, like, my drummer that I have now, Belle, and we're just, like, interchanging, like, key players and guitarists at the moment. Nice, but they're yeah. all so fire, every single one that I've had. And the name Dreamer actually comes from my middle name. Oh, amazing. Yes. My like, that is your middle name, or it's somehow related it, to it? It is my middle name. Nice. It is yeah. my middle name. I have I have two middle names. Oh, Chantel cool. Chantel and Dreamer. And funny story behind the, <laughs> the middle name Dreamer, my mom's Hispanic. 
So uh, she wanted my name, my middle name to be Dreamer, spelled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted. Spelled correctly. And then the doctor was like, you know, the doctor was like, okay, what do you want the middle name to be? And she was like, Dreamer, D-R-E-E-M-U-R-R. <laughs> and she said fucking nothing. She said nothing. She didn't even try to correct me. But now, you know, my band thought it was cool. It's yeah, a funny it's nice story. Be, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just simplify, like took out one of the R's, put a little Z at the end. Nice, yeah, and yeah. That's, yeah. that's how we came up with the name. Yeah, and it worked out too because it, it's uh, better for like search engine. Like you don't have as many people that are spelled true, the same way. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> I actually found out, out yeah. that my middle name, uh, do you know the game Undertale? Yeah, yeah. All their last names are dreamers spelled like my middle oh, name. Really? <laughs> that's <laughs> yes. crazy. That's, that's wild. insane. I was uh, like, damn, what's, what's the coincidence? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> wild. So then, so then with the band, is that like you guys are writing music together and, and trying to put stuff out as a band? Or is it more so like a performing band for your music, kind of the way that Phoenix does it? It's, I would say it's both because I still want to give them a platform to where they can like, like show their stuff. That's why I have like the Instagram page there. Right, right. Like we can, on some odd future shit, we can mm. like still release and have like the Dreamers as like a name. But it's mostly for performances, like right, of my right. music, mostly to like showcase my music, like my name be be on the posters, La Malara. But the Dreamer is definitely, definitely fire as band. I'm That's very, cool. very blessed to have them. Yeah, I hope to see you guys out live sometime. That'd be yes. cool. Yes, May fourth, May fourth, everybody. Oh, say less. May fourth, nice. Strike Magazine. <laughs> w- where, like, is Miami? It? Okay, dope. Nice. Miami. Nice, so nice, excited. nice. Yeah, everyone should tap into to your Instagram to check out like the flyer and everything you posted. Yes, nice. y'all. It's on Star Wars Day. Don't forget. <laughs> Don't forget. The fourth be with you. May the fourth <laughs> be with y'all. Uh, so speaking of of live shows, then I think we can we can get into the the set unless there's anything else that you wanted to touch on. Off the top of my head, no. Shout out to my Instagram, La Malara. That's it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to get into the performance, we can we can play. Um, yeah, you can perform these tunes. Thanks again to everyone for tuning in. Miami Community Radio. I'm Goon Green. It's an honor to be here with La Malara, speaking about some of her her origins in the music, her band, um, and this EP that's coming out next month with the accompanying music video. Really looking forward to that. So, y- anything you want to say about the songs, or you want to just get into it? Um, this first one's more. And since I already told the backstory of that one, I'm excited to perform it. Yes. 
shy, but the tension is louder when you move it. So this next one is my latest release. It's called Gimme That. That was not Gimme That. Okay. So no Gimme That. <laughs> no Gimme That tonight, guys. We're gonna move on to the next track. This next track is called You Know. It's gonna be the music video. Now, you know it now, now, you know it now, you know it now, 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 now, you
It's gonna come out next month. Brand new, unreleased, nobody's heard it yet. Exclusive. <laughs> kiss up on it, kiss up on it, no, you want it. Never let it. Heaven. I'm not 
just how you feel when you look into my eyes It ain't no surprise, you feel in my vibe Ain't the type of feeling you could easily deny I ain't gonna lie, want you deep inside But I'ma play it pretty, accidentally give you 50 50 Whenever you with me, you go silly, you start acting giddy My left way right here, made you think that it was your idea Let you find it like a souvenir let me whistle something in your ear, I want you to featuring Asa. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again to everyone for joining us here this evening. Miami Community Radio, once again, La Malara, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and sharing your music was incredible, really amazing to, to hear all that unreleased stuff. I love listening hey, to unreleased music, so <laughs> it's a pleasure up. to be in the room. Uh, and I, looking forward to the to the release as well. Is there a specific release date or is no TBD? specific release date? But I will say the end of next month. Keep an eye out. Yes, stay locked. Can you give everyone your your Instagram? L a h m a l a r a. Once again, L a h m a l a r a. La Malara. Thank y'all for having me. Thank y'all for watching and staying tuned and just being here with me. And yeah, I love y'all. So uh, <laughs> for everyone on the, on the stream, that's going to conclude this program. Thanks again for, for um, tuning in. Uh, up next, we have uh, the debut from a new resident, Nuji Art. Um, so as we get set for that, I am going to play some music from a former resident, Justice A. Gonzalez, some beautiful ambient conceptions of his to reset the energy before we step into this new set. And then after that, closing out the evening is another new show, Trance Hall with Torque, Wind, and Fire here in the first weekend of season two, Miami Community Radio. I'm Goon Green, what's more, Lamalara, thank you. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your evening.